today I'm going to share with you how we made our super easy hard apple cider. Thank God for coffee. The holidays are right around the corner. We've got Christmas coming up and we've got New Year's coming up and our hard apple cider is ready just in time for the season. This week we also scored some food grade buckets. I noticed a couple of weeks ago that our local Chinese restaurant had some food grade buckets in their entryway that they were selling for $3 each. So Dan this week went and picked up three of these buckets. One of the buckets I'm going to transfer my water glassed eggs into and um, that will be a lot more convenient. I won't have to, I'll leave it in one spot. I won't risk cracking any eggs by moving that glass jar around all the time. If you'd like to see how you can preserve eggs for a year or longer without refrigeration, I will link to our water glassing video below. Also this week, our fire cider for cold and flu season is done. And so uh, I strained that off. And before we added the honey, we decided we wanted to give it a little taste test. I, I taste a lot of garlic and uh, a little vinegar, cayenne pepper, uh, I taste the capsaicin from the the peppers, but it doesn't. I mean, it, it's not a hellfire burn. It's it's hot, but it's not godly hot. Now it's your turn. Mm -hmm. You said it was hot, but now. It real hot but I don't know if you can see but my eyes are starting to water <laughs> don't cry honey I think it's hot <laughs> after we tasted it I decided that we need to go ahead and add that honey and it did help the flavor a lot but you get this really explosion of heat like up into your sinuses and down your throat and I really think it's going to help us with our colds if you'd like to see how we made this natural tonic for the cold and flu season, I will link to that in the description below. Now let's talk about wild yeast hard apple cider. One of the things that you need to know is it's called wild yeast because it's using the natural yeast that's already on and in the fruit. So you could not do this if you say bought apple juice from the store. Uh, because it doesn't have any of the natural yeast left in it. So this method is super easy. There's only two ingredients, fresh apple juice and a little later on some sugar. So we didn't use any chemicals or anything like that to stop our fermentation as you see with some others that um, do make hard apple cider. We wanted to make it an all natural thing. Some weeks ago we juiced a bunch of apples and we got about four gallons of apple juice and about three and a half of those gallons or two and a half of those gallons we're using to make the hard apple cider. Of course you want to start out with all clean materials. Now some people use a solution of some type to um, clean their jars and their equipment. I just use really hot soapy water and rinsed it really good with hot water and I don't know I feel like it worked for us. You can see here that there was a lot of foam uh, and so we had to let that settle a little bit before we started making it and so what we did was we just capped off the jugs and we burped them every day a couple of times a day 
And then once that foam got settled down a little bit, then we went ahead and filtered it through some cheesecloth to get rid of more of that foam and stuff that was already present. Once we filtered it through the cheesecloth, we bottled it back up to continue the fermentation process and we added some airlocks on the top. You can see the airlocks here. Um, they work with just a little bit of water in it. It's designed to let out the gas while keeping a seal on it so that none, no other yeast or other bacteria can get inside while it's fermenting. We sat these in a dark location, cool. Um, we have a particular room in our house that we could keep the light off and keep the door shut. And so that's where we placed these. And we let them ferment for about two weeks. After two weeks, we pulled them back out and we went ahead and did another filter. And this time we filtered through a cotton dish towel, just a plain cotton dish towel. Um, but we wanted to get more of the gunk off of it and so that we would have a more clear apple cider. So we filtered it all through there into a bucket, a food grade bucket. And at this point we noticed that the flavor was really good. So we decided to go ahead and add some sugar for the final fermentation. We added a half a cup of sugar per gallon of cider, and then we just re-bottled that, put the airlocks back on, and sat it back in the same location for another three weeks. When you're working with wild yeast, it's going to be a little bit different probably each time, but this time we noticed that there were hardly any bubbles in coming into the, the airlock, like it wasn't letting off really anything at all after about three weeks. So we think the fermentation has stopped enough. One of the reasons you wanna be pretty darn sure that the fermentation has stopped is that when you bottle it, pressure is gonna build up in there if there's still active yeast and you could have exploding bottles. We did not want exploding bottles. So what we decided to do was go, and really you can bottle it at any point in time because you can stop the fermentation. And I'll talk about that in a minute. We decided to go ahead and bottle this. Now I do wanna mention something here. There's a tool that you can use called a hydrometer. If you'll notice on this hydrometer, there's a lot of different numbers. The main one you want to be concerned with is the 1.000. This hydrometer measures the specific gravity, and if, your, uh, if you measure your cider and it measures under 1.000 specific gravity, you can have a pretty good idea that your fermentation has stopped. Now, it's not foolproof, but you can have a pretty good idea that it has stopped. Another thing that a hydrometer does is it can give you an idea of how much alcohol is in your cider. But we did not have a hydrometer when we first started this project. If you wanna know the amount of alcohol in your final product, you would need to take a reading before you start fermenting and then another reading before you start bottling it. And subtracting those two would help you to figure out how much the alcohol content is in your cider. We are not able to figure that out, but we will next time. So one of the things that you see here is that we're using a siphon, and the siphon helps you to get the cider out of the jug without any of the sediment that has settled to the bottom, which can change the taste of your cider. So you don't want to use, that's like dead yeast and that kind of stuff. So. You want to use a siphon to get out the cider into the bottles and you'll see here that Dan is siphoning out the cider and I've got the bottle up on the counter because we wanted you to be able to see us bottling the cider but if we had the bottle lower than the jug then once Dan pumped this and started the cider flowing through the siphon then he wouldn't have had to pump it anymore it would just automatically flow through there but he's continuing to pump here because we're we wanted to capture this on video for you another thing you'll notice is that we are recycling some bottles 
The bottles that we're using are from a mineral water that I have in the past drank quite a bit of, and we've saved the bottles and the boxes, but also notice that these are clear bottles. These are clear 12 ounce bottles. What you would want to do if you were purchasing some bottles, the ideal thing would be to have a dark bottle because the light um, that can get in there in the bottle will degrade your cider more quickly. So what we decided to do is just fill the clear bottles and then keep them in the box so that they would still have a dark location. Once our bottles were filled, we went ahead and capped them off. And any of this stuff can be purchased online. I just bought um, a bulk bag of standard size bottle caps that I knew were going to fit on the bottles that we were using. And so, and of course you want everything to be clean. So we, I went ahead and washed those in really hot soapy water and gave them a good rinse. Now to make sure the fermentation had pretty much stopped because again, we don't want exploding bottles. After about two days, we went ahead and uh, opened one of the bottles to see how much um, carbonation it had. Did you hear that little? Yep, there was just a little fizz. So we'll recap it. I want to set that one in the corner. So we don't do that one again. It didn't have a lot of carbonation at all and so we decided to let it sit again for a couple of more days and check a different bottle to see what kind of carbonation that one had. Okay. You don't see any bubbles, do you? Mm-mm. It's about the same as last time. Mm-hmm. So you think we're good to just leave I them do. now? I do. All right, we are done. If we find that when we open a bottle, it's getting to be a lot of carbonation, like there's a lot of off-gassing going on, what we'll do is we will burp the bottles, recap them, and then we will do something called pasteurizing. And I saw this on a forum, and I think it's a, a really natural way to stop uh, yeast fermentation. Yeast dies at 130 degrees, raising the heat to 130 degrees. At 190 degrees, it starts to affect your alcohol in your finished product. So what you would do is you would fill a pan with water, um, enough to go up past whatever the amount of cider is that you have in your bottles. Heat that water up to about 180 degrees, Turn the heat off because you do not want um, heat against the bottom of the pan and your bottles resting on the bottom of the pan. It's just like canning. You don't want bottles to explode. So you would turn off that heat, put the bottles in, um, put a lid over it, and let that set for about 10 minutes. And that should stop the yeast from being active. Then you'll just remove those and let them cool and go ahead and store them. So now we feel like this is done and our hard cider will last for a year or more, but I don't think it's gonna last that long. I really, really wish you were here to taste this. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. Thanks for being here with us today. And if you've gotten any value out of this video, please consider subscribing to our channel and also hit that like button. It really helps us out a lot with YouTube. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.